Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a 5-color Legends deck built around Joda the Unifier, a 5-mana 5 5-5 five five Legendary Creature, saying Legendary Creatures we control get plus X plus X, where X is the number of Legendary Creatures we control, including Joda himself. So if we play Joda on an empty board, he's already a 6-6. Six six. And whenever we cast a Legendary spell from our hand, exile cards from the top of our library until we exile a Legendary non-land card with lesser mana value, and we may cast that card without paying its mana cost, so it kind of has a legendary cascade, which is also the reason why we're including one copy of Errant Street Artist in our deck. Not a particularly powerful card, but if we have a Joda in play and play one of our many 2-drops, we at least get to cascade into a 1-drop and still cast it, which will increase the power and toughness of our entire team, so I think it's still worth it to include one Errant. And then the reason this 5-color deck is even possible in Standard is thanks to some of the lands in our mana base. Besides all the tri lands coming into play tapped, we also have 4 copies of Plaza of Heroes, making 1 mana of any color to cast our legendary spells. Can also be used to maybe give one of our legendary creatures Hexproof and Indestructible until end of turn, which can be useful in the late game. And then Secluded Courtyard will be naming Human, since all the creatures in our deck are human except for the one Sigarda, Champion of Light, which still has great synergy with humans, giving them a plus one plus one and with coven if sigarda gets to attack can also find additional humans to provide a bit of card advantage so i think it's still worth it to include one sigarda even though it can be a bit challenging to cast if we have multiple copies of courtyard out naming human as it is an angel and then taking a look at the rest of our deck, at 2 mana we've got a full set of Catilda, which is incredibly helpful in ramping out Joda ahead of schedule. Can also make it so we can potentially cast 2 spells in the same turn by tapping our humans for mana. And then in the late game can also potentially put additional plus 1 counters on the team. We also have the full set of Denik, Pious Apprentice, a 2-3 lifelinker, so pretty good stats on a 2-drop, and also says cards in graveyards cannot be the targets of spells or abilities, and later can also be disturbed out of the graveyard for 4 mana, turning into a 3-2 flyer, the Pious Apparition, which can also potentially provide additional card advantage in the form of clue tokens. And then the life-linking creatures in this deck also scale nicely if we have a Joda in play to increase power and toughness, making it much harder for the opponent to outrace us. Danik also synergizes nicely with Shana, Purifying Blade, a 3-3 a lifelinker, saying at the beginning of our end step we can pay X mana, and if we do draw X cards, but X cannot be greater than the amount of life we gained this turn, so the more lifelinking creatures we have, the easier it is to draw extra cards with Shana. And then besides Joda increasing power and toughness, we also have two copies of King Darien, giving other creatures we control plus one plus one, and for five mana can put a plus one counter on it and make a one one soldier token. Can also be sacrificed to protect our tokens, although it doesn't come up often in this deck. And then we also have the full playset of Halana and Helena partners, which is probably the most synergistic card with Joda, a 2-3 with first strike and reach, saying at the beginning of combat on our turn, put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on another target creature we control, where X is the partner's power, and that creature gains haste until end of turn. So if we have Joda in play alongside the partners, the partners often gets at least plus 2 plus 2, if not more, from Joda, which will then translate into at least 4 plus 1 counters with the ability, as well as haste and if we have an even bigger board then we can potentially just kill the opponent out of nowhere with the partners potentially even giving our Joda haste in the process then at 2 mana we also have 2 copies of Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, useful against the more controlling strategies, making all non-creature spells one more expensive to cast. We could potentially not include any non-creature spells in our deck, but I did end up including 3 copies of a Relic of Legends, which is pretty similar in what it does to Catilda, as it can tap for 1 mana of any color, and we can tap an untapped legendary creature we control to add 1 mana of any color, so another useful way in ramping out Joda and setting up those powerful turns where we cast multiple spells and the same turn. Relic has the advantage that it can ignore summoning sickness, whereas Catilda cannot, so it becomes easier to play a legendary creature and then tap it for mana right away to potentially cast another one. And then we also have two copies of Baird, a 2-2 saying at the beginning of our end step, if we control a creature with power greater than its base power, we get to make a 1-1 white soldier creature token. And we've got a ton of ways to modify power and toughness. Between King Darien, we have partners, Sigarda, and then Joda, of course, can also make it easy to enable Baird. 
And then at 3 mana, 2 copies of Adlin, great in any creature strategy, power equal to the number of creatures we control, and whenever we attack we get to make a 1-1 one -one human token that's tapped and attacking, and those tokens will also synergize with Katilda. And then 2 copies of Lagroa, giving us a bit of creature interaction, can exile an opposing creature when it enters battlefield, and if we expect our opponent to remove Lagrella, it can sometimes be worth it to exile our own creature as well. That way if Lagrella gets removed we get our creature back with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters, and then at 4 mana also have 2 copies of Ertai Resurrected, giving us additional interaction, can also be used as a counter spell, giving the opponent a card in return. And then as we mentioned, our mana base has Plaza, Courtyard, plenty of Trial Lands, which can sometimes be awkward since they do come into play tapped, so they don't allow us to curve out perfectly, although we're happy to play one tapped on turn one. And the main colors in our deck are blue, white and green, so four copies of Headquarters, and then four copies of Garden, and then one of each of the remaining Trial Lands. And then one basic forest and one basic plains in case of an opposing field of ruin. And then the various channel lands from Kamigawa are great too, since they get a one mana discount for each legendary creature we control, so we can often activate them for just one mana. With Aiganjo as removal, Soaring City can bounce something, Abandoned Mire can get something back from the graveyard, and the Ruin Danik also does not stop Abandoned Mire since it doesn't target, so that's an important interaction to keep in mind. And then Boseju can deal with artifacts or enchantments. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. And uh, sadly we do have a lot of tap lands, so we won't be able to curve out perfectly. But we'll lead with the headquarters. And then hope for an untap land. If not, go with the gardens. And then turn three, either Danik or Baird. Now we could play a 3-drop as well, although Adeline is much better if we can attack right away. Playing Relic doesn't let me double spell here, so I think I still play a 2-drop and a tap lane, and we'll go with Denik. And then next turn we can maybe play Relic and another spell. And Liliana is going to make a sacrifice, Denik. So now I'm liking Relic plus Baird. And then next turn we can maybe pressure Liliana. Could even use Boseju for one mana here to take out Bankbuster. But we'll wait and see. Might want to discard Boseju. Okay, Trespasser is annoying since that will exile Denik. Liliana pluses, and probably get rid of a land. Ertai is not bad. I think I'm still in favor of double spelling Darien and Adeline. Bankbuster can ambush Baird. But Liliana dies. But still leave us in a decent spot. It's no fun when they hit back. Adeline down. Trespasser attacks. Okay, probably just activate King Darien here. If they had a cut down, we would have seen it already. Glutton's attacking. So glad we didn't use Beseju on Bankbusters since our opponent's stuck on three. Hasn't had time to draw with a Bankbuster yet. And now a Fable. 
That's acceptable. And there's Joda, perfect. So if I play Joda, that's all for now. But it's probably still good enough. Could also just activate King Darien once again. But uh, yeah, let's go for Joda. Opponent trades. And then next turn Ertai could uh, trigger Joda as well. Opponent goes digging with Fable to hit her land drops. Another Liliana, we can easily sacrifice a soldier as her opponent discards Shieldred and Invoke Despair. So they probably have another Shieldred in hand, which we can take out with Ertai. So we'll put an upkeep stop. So we can maybe take her out before taking another draw step. It's gonna be another Liliana instead. Okay. Makes us discard Ertai. Not too bad. But her opponent's still in trouble here. They have one blocker. And we've got a lot of powerful top decks. Courtyard's not one of them. But we're just gonna activate King Darien and then attack our opponent with everyone. That leaves him dead. So they have to chum Joda. Opponent falls to two. And uh, sure, we'll play out our land. Could also name Angel here since we have plenty for humans. Massacre for two. That happens. And then Liliana can minus. Leaving us with Joda. Sacrifices must be made. So I really need to top deck a spell we can cast here. Denik counts. So cast Denik, gets our one drop, which we can now sacrifice to Liliana and force them to trump. We're down to eight, but still safe against an Invoke Despair. Get rid of Erend. Time for Shieldred, maybe? Yep. So if we attack with both, they'll be forced to block Joda. And a plaza can make it indestructible as well. So we're still... Safe against an Invoke Despair. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is a little awkward with all four tap lands. But we can still maybe ramp into Joda ahead of schedule. I don't think this is good enough. Turn three Catilda. With an untap land, maybe turn for Joda. Although then we're not really doing much else. Let's take a mulligan. This seems better. And then... Probably get rid of Shana, so we keep some interaction. And this is just a good aggressive hand. Thalia into Lagrella and two partners. Although on the play, I could see the advantage of Shanna over Lagrella since the opponent's not guaranteed to have something for us to exile turn 3.
opponent mono white so far and a guardian. I don't mind exiling here. And we draw a Shana anyways. Yeah, I think it's still Lagrella to open up an attack. Opponent might use Brutal Cathar to exile Lagrella, leaving partners alive, which is probably more relevant. And then I wouldn't be exiling Thalia. Even though that was an option. If we are sure that we're gonna get rid of Lagrella. Could see Peacekeeper make partners more expensive, but then we still have a decent follow-up. Alright, and there's a Peacekeeper. So that'll name partners. And then, yeah, hoping for something like Katilda, Joda. Although Joda will have trouble casting right now. Ertai, we can cast. Yeah, that seems fine. Get an attack in. And then if they play their Angel next turn, we can play Partners and start growing the team. Another Peacekeeper instead. Alright, that's uh, naming Partners again. Airtai can attack, we can play Shanna. And move on. And I'll be playing the Gardens. So King Darien would also be a pretty great top deck. Got a couple good ones. The double green prevents us from casting Joda. Although we could cast our uh, Sigarda. So that's another good top deck potentially. Peacekeeper attacks. What if I double block Lagrella, Thalia? They can kill one of the two. That seems fine. And then get a Guardian back, which I don't care about. And another Peacekeeper, fair enough. Third time's a charm. We can attack into it and then use Plaza to make indestructible or just play another Lagrella, also works. And then Shanna can draw two. So that should finally pull us ahead. I think we're only attacking with Shanna. Could see the argument for exiling Ertai. So if it comes back, we get the ability once again. Finally, I would just trade for a card in the opponent's hand, which doesn't seem worth it. First strike does not help against Indestructible. But yeah, Shanna getting to draw two is a pretty big deal. And now partners, we can play for four mana. And growing a life-linking creature is also quite nice. Opponent likely has some four drops in hand. And yeah, opponent packs it in, just too far behind. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand is keepable, I think. Missing a bit of top end, but an early Catilda can lead to good things. And we can maybe use a six-man ability alongside Baird. Can also provide more tokens. And then we'll lead with a Proving Ground, which helps cast both Baird and Catilda. Opponent on a red deck, probably holding a Burn spell. So that'll answer the first Catilda we play. Opponent's just going upstairs. Having a Lagrella as a bit of interaction is going to be important. There's Joda, excellent. So yeah, play Catilda. Most likely gets answered. But next turn we can go Tower plus another Catilda to set up a turn for Joda. A lightning Strike takes care of Catilda. Time for a Stormseeker on three, maybe. Yep. Do we try and exile it with Lagrella? I think I still prefer setting up Joda, because once we have a Joda in play, it's very difficult for the red deck to deal with. And they might not see Catilda as a huge threat here, worth killing. 
gonna be another Stormseeker, so take six. But then we should be mostly stable, so then it's mostly flying creatures to worry about. Although we also have a Sigarda coming up. But yeah, we're at 9, so they could still potentially push through some damage and uh, burn us out. So a big turn coming up here. Another Stormseeker, so they can hit us down to 3. Don't have any life gain in hand, unfortunately. And an Apicure puts us to two. Okay, so what's the best we can do here? My guess is Sigarda, which has a good chance of finding a life-linking creature with a Cascade, and also prevents us from dying to an opposing flyer. All right, Barrett can make a token. So can I afford to attack with Joda? Put the opponent to ten. Then next turn our opponent plays a creature, they can give it haste. They can pump Epicure as well to make sure that's lethal. So I don't think I can afford to, although never mind, I guess we will get another token. So that should help, so yeah, we'll attack with Joda. And then we should be able to beat most creatures, but uh, a burn spell is game over and they get to dig with a blood token. Crucible making two one ones. Uh oh, that uh, was a reason to keep back Joda, so they can pump two of the tokens. Although let's see here, well we're not dead yet, since we have four blockers. So we take one down to one, and then our opponent seems dead on the way back. Oof, I thought we were dead there for a second. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is quite promising. Good mana. And then Catilda to ramp out Joda. And we might even be able to play Sigarda. Which can sometimes be tricky to cast with a courtyard naming human. Opponent does seem to have removal here, sadly. Voltage Surge takes out Catilda. So that slows us down. Harvester at least cannot take out Denik. Still probably forced to name Human to play Joda. But now it's going to be trickier to play Sigarda. Opponent offers a trade, will decline since we have partners to grow Danik here, and a Fable. Tank for four. And then hope for land next turn to play Joda. If not, King Darien is still pretty decent. If our opponent can produce another blood token, we will lose the partners, which will also let the Shaman attack. Would have been a reason to keep Danik back, although getting that juicy lifelink attack in seemed worth it. So Voltage Surge sacrifices blood token, takes out partners. Take five. Shana is not bad. Can attack, play Shana, draw card. And another partners. So reflection is definitely a problem with a uh, harvester in play. So I think we actually want to trade for it. Opponent offering up the goblin instead. I guess we'll block that one instead now. Although it's still close with harvester because of that reflection. 
Although next turn they would only have one blood token at most, which does not kill any of our creatures. And we'll try this. And a meat hook massacre for five, gonna wipe the board. Fair enough. A relic of legends versus partners. I guess we will play it out. And then now playing Cigar Dice, trivial. Invoke Despair would have been quite punishing for playing out our creature. Still a lose six life for opponent draws. Three. Now we want to try and set up Joda in a turn where we can maybe double spell and get immediate value. So how about Partners plus Baird? Which will also make a token to maybe sack to another Invoke Despair. And then now it's going to be easier to potentially play Joda and another card alongside it. And Joda plus Partner is also incredibly devastating. Shieldred is fine. So gotta watch out for Infernal Grasp at instant speed here. Could take out Joda. It's gonna be a Bankbuster instead, alright. So our opponent's tapped out. And they're at 8, so... This is gonna be quite the turn. Play Joda. And then... Do I play something else? King Darien, for instance? And our opponent scoops it up. Yeah, they know their writing's on the wall. The uh, partners are going to be able to put at least seven counters here, or maybe even eight on a creature, since we'll get two more legendaries, plus King Darien pumps partners. King Darien finds another legendary, which we can maybe give haste to. So our opponent's going to be in chum block mode, and we're going to be incredibly far ahead. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and is. A little awkward with uh, Proving Ground not casting Denik, but we can play a Catilda on two still. And then maybe Adlin on three. But either way, we should be able to ramp into Joda pretty quickly. Now do we play Thalia instead? Kind of like that idea. If our opponent's an enchantment deck, this could slow them down, and then sets up Adlin turn three a little bit better. Now if I play Catilda, we can already play Joda next turn, so that also has its advantages. So maybe we'll try that approach. Catilda plus Denik, if we tap carefully. And then leave ourselves with Adlin to play after Joda, to maybe find some more exciting cards of the Cascade. Naturalists kind of offsets Thalia here. And a Relic of Legends, a little awkward with Thalia. Name Human. And then, yeah, if I were to play Relic, I can no longer play Joda. Already have Catilda kind of helping us, so we'll uh, play Joda here. And attack. Opponent falls to 15. And let's see if they can answer Joda. If not, they're gonna be in trouble. Double Naturalist. Okay, so now they actually get a discount and a 1 mana teachings. Opponent attacking. Probably not advisable. So, do I want to play a Relic first? I don't think so. Just play Adlin. See what we hit. Another Thalia will decline. But we will be attacking with all. They can eat a token, blocking with double naturalist to gain four. But they might still be dead, so they'll have to chump instead. So as the dust settles, our opponent's at six. 
think I'm still okay playing this one out. If our opponent answers Joda, we might switch to activating Katilda instead. And our opponent explodes, yeah. Early Katilda ramping into Joda, got the job done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Could use a bit more top ends, but uh, start off Thalia into maybe Adlin. Could be quite strong. Opponent could still have a cut down, although they wouldn't be able to Infernal Grasp Thalia at least. So I think we still give it a shot. No cut down. Tap land, so yeah, we're unlikely to see removal here. So Adlin is good to go. And we get to make a token right away. Probably going to keep Soaring City as a bounce spell, which is going to be pretty cheap with multiple legendaries in play. And there's Shieldreds, which I might have wanted to bounce before taking two, although now Joe does an interesting twist. So what's our plan? I have a couple tap lands. I can play Danik and then still Soaring City for one mana. Yeah, that's going to be good enough. Attack, and then next turn we can potentially play Joda with an untapped land. If not, Relic of Legends gets us close to casting Joda as well. Another Denik. So if I attack with all, I assume our opponent's forced to block Adelin, and then we can also make it indestructible with Plaza, which wouldn't be bad here. So I think that's the play. Over Relic, which doesn't cast anything afterwards. So yeah, the power of an early Thalia against these mid-range decks cannot be underestimated. Opponent trades. So, could also let damage happen, play Relic. I think making Adelin indestructible is still worth it. This way for opponent does have a Meat Hook Massacre to kill some of our smaller creatures. We still have Adelin left over. And yeah, there's a Massacre for one. Kills Tokens and Thalia. Opponent gains a bit. Lagrella. If we play it here, should be enough for lethal since it'll grow Adelin. Make another token. And that's game. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand, I think. Katilda to ramp out Joda up against a green-white enchantments deck, presumably. Question is how to sequence here with our lands. Probably worth it to play an early Katilda. If they remove it, we can try again, play a tap land. And then now with Courtyard, set up a turn for Joda. Restoration on three, grows Kami. So we could play Lagrella to exile Kami. And still play a tap land. Boseju also going to be pretty nice as an answer for enchantments. Sometimes it's worth it to exile another creature that we control as insurance in case they remove Lagrella. In this case we really need Katilda to play Joda, so... One mana companion after Naturalist is put in play with Restoration. That's a nice sequence. Still three mana left. And a Skyblast Samurai 4-4 four, four Flyer. Okay. Well, we can play Joda. And then still have a one mana Boseju available. Do I attack here is a question. I don't think so. Keep Boseju available to maybe blow up a removal for Joda. Katilda's also scary. 5-5 five, five flyer. 
and a Reign of Truth. All right, we'll wait and see what they target here. Samurai, so we can take that out with Poseju. Although next turn they can pump Katilda, so we're not out of the woods yet. Although Partners was an amazing draw. So play that using Katilda. And then we could still play Shanna afterwards. That checks out. Fine Baird. Fine Thalia. And then we'll pump Shanna with partners, giving it 9 plus 1 counters, 19, 19 lifelink. And then I'll play Abandon Mire to draw one. And her opponent explodes, what a turn. Alright. So yeah, we got to see our 5 color humans deck in action. Overall, definitely a deck capable of some incredibly explosive turns with Joda, especially paired with uh, partners, giving us a ton of extra plus one counters. It can be a little bit weak against removal heavy decks, which can take out your key legendary creatures and eventually take over with powerful cards like Invoke Despair. So that's also where an early Thalia can be helpful. I decided to go with a split of only two Thalias to make room for Relic of Legends, which is useful in helping us double spell to set up those powerful turns with Joda. Although Katilda can kind of do the same, so it's possible that Relic of Legends isn't necessary or we can get away with just one or two copies. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.